Hello and welcome to FYI Weekly, your official source for the latest news and information from the city of Greensboro. FEMA Disaster Recovery Centers are open to those whose homes or businesses were affected by the tornado in April. Representatives from North Carolina Emergency Management, FEMA and the Small Business Administration are at the centers to explain disaster assistance programs and help survivors apply for aid. The center in Guilford County is located at the Guilford County Department of Public Health, located at 1203 Maple Street in Greensboro. The center in Rockingham County is located at 1716 Freeway Drive, off of Business 29 in Reedsville. The hours are Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. and closed on Sunday until further notice. Those seeking disaster assistance are encouraged to register with FEMA before going to a recovery center. Applicants may apply online for the SBA disaster loans using a secure website. To be considered for all forms of disaster assistance, applicants should register online at disasterassistance.gov or download FEMA's mobile app. The site will list the information applicants need to provide. Residents without internet or cell service should call FEMA's helpline at 1-800-621-3362. The Federal Emergency Management Agency and North Carolina Emergency Management Office are detailing the summary of recovery assistance as of Thursday, May 22nd. For individual assistance, 112 registrations have been approved. The amount approved for housing assistance is $228,000. Other needs assistance totals $147,000, and the Small Business Administration has approved loans in the amount of $4,300. Nearly 400 housing inspections have been issued, with more than 300 of those inspections completed. The number of registrations in Guilford County totals 751, with another 70 registrations in Rockingham County. In recent weeks, we've experienced thunderstorms, which can result in flash flooding. Floods can occur with little advance warning. There are things you can do now to protect yourself and your property. Elevate electrical panels, air conditioners, heat pumps, furnaces, fuel tanks, and water heaters at least 12 inches above projected flood heights. Report blockages in storm drains, culverts, and under bridges by calling the city's contact center at 336-373-2489. Consider purchasing flood insurance. Flood damage is not usually covered by a standard homeowner policy. Never dump anything down a storm drain. Storm drains carry untreated water directly to our streams and lakes. This polluted water adversely impacts aquatic wildlife. Find out if your property is located in a flood zone by calling the city's Water Resources Department at 336-373-2055 or visit the state's flood map website. In an effort to help each of us improve our quality of life, the city has partnered with Cone Health for a series of brief and informative videos designed to inspire you to make better choices when it comes to healthy living. Let's check in with our friends at Cone Health for today's News for Your Health. I'm Dr. Tamer Yalsin Kaya, Medical Director at Carolina's Fertility Institute and a Reproductive Endocrinology Infertility Specialist. Today, I'm going to talk about information couples need to know as they start their journey to become parents. Infertility is defined as inability to conceive after 12 months of unprotected intercourse. However, the, this definition has been modified, for example, for uh, women uh, over 35. They are advised to seek medical help only after six months of unprotected intercourse. And women uh, who are 40 or older are advised to get medical help only after three months. Infertility caused by problems in the female partner about a third of the time, problems in the male partner about a third of the time. The remaining third caused uh, by combination of issues in male and female partner, or it may be unexplained. Female factors are usually ovulation disorders or it can be anatomic problems with the fallopian tubes or uterus or a condition known as endometriosis. Uh, male causes of infertility 
are usually problems with uh, sperm production, low sperm count or low sperm uh, motility, or they can be issues with uh, sexual function. The unexplained uh, causes of infertility are believed to be due to uh, conditions such as mild endometriosis or um, immunologic causes, uh, timing or problems with intercourse. Uh, before trying to conceive, it's very important to know that certain lifestyle factors impact reproductive health and ability to conceive um, and not observing these uh, points may actually cause a delay in conceiving. Uh, number one is uh, overweight and sometimes being underweight can delay ovulation or interfere with proper egg production in women and it can also affect sperm production in men. It is important not to exceed more than five hours per week of um, strenuous exercise, uh, but also not to be inactive. We recommend all tobacco products uh, to be stopped and alcohol intake should be limited to one serving per day on average. Uh, and this is true for both partners. We recommend uh, to all women who are getting ready to uh, try 400 micrograms of folic acid supplementation, which is over the counter. We also recommend uh, a limited amount of caffeine consumption by women, since it has been associated with miscarriages, limiting it to 18 ounces of coffee or its equivalent per day. Particularly for men, it is important to uh, watch their occupational exposure to toxic chemicals. Also, for people who are taking regular uh, medications for their uh, health problems, it is best to uh, consult with your family doctor or your gynecologist uh, before you start trying to see what medications uh, should be switched or stopped. Finally, uh, it's important to recognize that use of uh, recreational drugs such as uh, marijuana or cocaine can be harmful. Another point is how to time intercourse. What is the fertile window? Uh, a normal ovulation uh, occurs somewhere at midpoint of a 28-day cycle. And for women who have longer menstrual intervals, 32 days for example, it's best to uh, subtract 14 um, from the menstrual cycle interval to obtain the day on which they ovulate. So uh, according to this rule, a woman who has 32-day cycles would be expected to ovulate uh, on day 18 of her cycle. So once we establish the day of probable ovulation, then it's good to have intercourse three, four, during a three, four day uh, window before the ovulation and about two days after the anticipated ovulation. Um, during the journey to have a baby, it's important to talk to your physician, your primary care provider, and also to seek help from a specialist when uh, certain red flags exist in the uh, uh, individual partners, such as previous history of tubal uh, surgery or endometriosis, either in the person or in her family, uh, or prior uh, exposure to cancer uh, agents uh, and such. Thank you for joining me. I hope you find this information helpful as you continue on your journey to have a baby. For more information, please go to conhealth.com slash infertility. I'm Dr. Tamer Yalsinkaya. Thank you. Greensboro Transit Authority is setting its sights on what transportation will look like in 2040. We'll have that story and more news coming up after the break. Stay with us.
Welcome back to FYI Weekly. Greensboro police say residential burglaries tend to spike during summer months. This is because people tend to leave doors, windows, and garage doors open more often when the weather is warm and they are away on vacation. This time of year, both situations make homes prime targets for burglars. There are a few simple steps you can take to safeguard your home. Lock doors and windows when you are home and away. Trim trees and bushes to improve visibility of your home. Install a monitored alarm system. Leave one or two lights on while you're away or use plug-in timers to turn lights on and off. Never advertise your home will be unoccupied by posting information on social media. Ask a trusted neighbor to watch your home while you're away, tend to your lawn, and park in your driveway from time to time. Keep a detailed list of your valuables to help with criminal investigations and insurance claims if items are stolen. GPD also offers free home security assessments. To schedule an assessment, visit the city's website to contact a community resource officer. As Greensboro is set to grow over the next 20 years, Greensboro Transit Authority's Mobility Greensboro 2040 plan recognizes the vital need for an updated public transportation system. The Mobility Greensboro 2040 plan will establish long-term strategies and programs designed to make the Greensboro area's bus system more efficient and increase the number of bus riders. To achieve this, GTA is conducting an in-depth study that assesses the changing transit needs of the Piedmont Triad's residents, employees, students, and visitors. The study will unfold over the next 18 months. Residents can help to shape the future of Greensboro by taking a moment to complete an online survey. The study will shed light on untapped markets and service areas where service can be redirected, determine what network structure works best, and what new services and technology can be utilized. For more information about Mobility Greensboro 2040 or to take this survey, please visit getonboard2040.org. The North Carolina Folk Festival will celebrate its inaugural year in downtown Greensboro the first weekend of September. Arts Greensboro is the recipient of a $25,000 grant from the National Endowment for the Arts to support the 2018 North Carolina Folk Festival on September 7th, 8th and 9th. The grant will be used to support the inaugural legacy event of the National Folk Festival's three-year residency in Greensboro. The event will feature national and regional artists presenting traditional music, dance, and crafts in performances, workshops, and demonstrations. Music genres will range from bluegrass to gypsy jazz, along with performances showcasing the area's diverse refugee and immigrant populations. The festival will also place special emphasis on North Carolina's rich cultural traditions and heritage. The event comes on the heels of the remarkable success of the first ever North Carolina residency by the National Folk Festival, which brought more than 400,000 people downtown between 2015 and 2017. In an effort to spotlight and celebrate local artists, business owners, community builders, and essentially the next generation of leaders, the city is proud to partner with Action Greensboro to introduce our Made in Greensboro series. This day, we place the spotlight on self-esteem builder and nonprofit executive director, Alana Allen. Alana Allen founded the nonprofit foundation I Am a Queen. Here, girls as young as 10 years old learn to identify toxic relationships with friends or family. They confront the absence of their fathers and talk about how that may impact their future romantic relationships. Most importantly, they work to let go of anger and bitterness. This is the impact Alana is making with her burgeoning nonprofit. Run on a shoestring and a prayer, Alana has counseled hundreds of Greensboro girls through her intensive mentorship program and annual teen conference. Alana has worked in public relations and journalism, including a job in the press office of former Governor Beverly Perdue. She is currently Director of Alumni Communications for her alma mater, North Carolina A&T State University. When people kept telling her she needed to work with children, Alana started a small program at Windsor. 
She would stand outside of shopping centers or parks or wherever she could find girls who would attend her program. Persistence paid off. Alana started working with girls from Claremont Homes. They are learning to believe in themselves when they declare, I am a queen. To learn more about Made in Greensboro or to see more images taken by photographers Jerry Walford and Scott Mothersbaugh, visit the Action Greensboro website at madeingso.com. The City of Greensboro is known for its top-notch summer concert series. Coming up after the break, we'll tell you about the musical performers participating in MUSEP. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. The Cultural Arts Center has a host of events designed to bring the community together in some of our more popular park spaces. Concerts tops the list of activities on tap this summer. Joining me now to tell us about the annual MUSEP concert series is Jennifer Hance. She is the director of the Music Center. Hello, Jennifer. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So glad you're here. For people who are not familiar or who've never participated in MUSEP, tell us what is this about? Yes. So MUSEP stands for Music for a Sunday Evening in the Park, and it's a concert series that we run every Sunday, June through August. Uh, it's actually entering its 39th summer. So we've been going for, for quite a few years, and it's very exciting. They're free concerts that feature local musicians and our local facilities throughout the city. Oh, that's very impressive to have such a long run yes. for something that doesn't cost anything to participate in. Correct. They are free concerts and open for our entire community. And what is your favorite aspect of coordinating this concert series? I really love the fact that we can feature the beautiful facilities that we have in Parks and Recreation, but also the fact that we can feature our local musicians. We have so much talent here in Greensboro, and it's really nice to have a showcase that really focuses on our local talent. Wonderful, and I'm sure people are going to mark their calendars and look forward to that. Are there any new acts that will be performing this year? We actually have several new acts this summer. Uh, on our first concert on June 3rd, Sam Fraser and the Side Effects will be joining us, and Sam is a songwriter here in Greensboro. So they'll be doing a lot of original music. And then we have Low Key, which is a band that they call themselves, they say they do from classic rock to pops. So they do a little bit of everything and sort of span the spectrum of music. On that same concert will be Gate City Divas. And they are an amazing group with people like Melva Houston, um, Allison King. And they're just a wonderful group of women that do R&B and soul and jazz. And they're a really fun, upbeat group. And then the other one that we have is Weston Mambo, which is a Latin group. So they're one that you're definitely going to want to get up and dance and just have a great time. Okay. I love the um, genres. There's yes. so many different mixes. It kind of reminds me of a precursor to the folk festival. Yes, absolutely. And that's one of the things we try to do is we really want to expose people to all different styles of music because we all tend to gravitate to one style or another. And we really want people to expand what they know and expand their, their musical repertoire. Excellent. And while they're doing that, they can tour around Green. Yes. and see different locations and facilities. Are there any old favorites that will be coming back by popular demand? Oh, absolutely. Wally West Big Band is always an old favorite that everyone just loves. They're an amazingly talented group of musicians. Um, that's basically a big band, but sort of scaled down. So there's nine to 10 of them, and they perform standard jazz music, and it's a lot of fun. Um, we also have Warren Bowl and Allen who will be joining us, and they're a folk group. Um, and then we have groups that are run through the city of Greensboro, such as the Greensboro Concert Band, Greensboro Big Band, and the Philharmonia of Greensboro. Okay. Yeah. Well, most of these concerts are outdoors. Yes. Are there any tips that you need to give to newcomers to this experience? Yeah, we always tell people this is a time to come and really make an evening out of it. Bring blankets, bring chairs, bring a picnic if you want. Um, always bring water and stay hydrated because we do have hot summers here in North Carolina. Um, but it's really a time to come and bring your family and your friends and your four-legged friends on a leash and, and just have a nice picnic and enjoy some great music. Okay, well thank you Jennifer. This is great. You've given us a great preview of MUSEP and I'm certain a lot of folks are going to sign up yes. and look at the list, see who's performing and it will be another huge success. Yeah. We're excited. Absolutely. We'll come back again and share some of the other programs that you're responsible for. Definitely. I would love to do that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Stay tuned for a little known fact about Greensboro as we tell you something about the city. That's coming up after the break. Stay with us.
Welcome back. One way to stay informed about what's happening in the city is by attending or tuning in to city council meetings. The Greensboro City Council meetings are open to the public, but if you can't attend, we broadcast the meetings live right here on GTN. We stream the meetings live on the city's website. Council meetings take place at 5.30 p.m. on the first and third Tuesdays of the month on Level 2 of the Melvin Municipal Office Building located at 300 West Washington Street. The first meeting of the month includes public comments and special presentations. Meetings on the third Tuesday of the month focus on public hearings and city business. The fourth Tuesday is reserved for a meeting as needed. To review the council meeting schedule and agendas, please visit the city's website. Here's an opportunity to learn a little something about the city. The City of Greensboro is accepting applications for its premier civic education program, City Academy. The application window is open now through June 30th. This program is celebrating its 15th year and is designed to develop civic leadership and build a stronger city through well-informed and engaged residents. The program is free for participants. City Academy takes residents behind the scenes of city government operations through interactive presentations at various city locations. Students visit the police firing range, Guilford Metro 911, and the Greensboro Transportation Operations and Maintenance Facility, just to name a few. Classes are held weekly from 5.45 p.m. to 9 p.m. from September through November, with graduation scheduled for November 20th during the City Council meeting. City Academy is open to as many as 30 residents representing all City Council districts and various backgrounds. To apply for the Fall 2018 session, visit the city's website or call the Community Relations Office at 336-373-2723. Coming up after the break, we'll showcase our department spotlight, but first, prepare to mark your calendar for all the great events happening this week on the town. Hi, this is Amanda. It's another action-packed weekend here in Greensboro, so kick off your summer with these fun activities and more. This Friday, meet the artists, hear the music, and dance with the people. First Friday in Greensboro is a free monthly self-guided walking tour that includes downtown's eclectic shops, art galleries, studios, museums, and alternative art venues. Participating downtown shops stay open from 6 to 9 p.m. on First Friday every month. Look for the green balloons for the participating sites. For more information on First Friday, go to downtowngreensboro.net. On Sunday, the Tanger Family Bicentennial Gardens will host the Parisian Promenade starting at noon. This event recreates the sights, scenes, sounds, and smells of the spring afternoon in Paris, all in our Bicentennial Garden. Sidewalk artists, live music, children's activities, family games, and a poodle parade, and more. Admission is free. The Parks and Recreation staff will also be on hand to discuss Plan to Play, the department's 2038 master plan. Stop by their booth to join the discussion. For more information on Parisian Promenade, go to greensborobeautiful.org. Mark your calendars for the Kids Poetry Basketball Summer Celebration Event, the Father's Day Edition. The event will take place on Saturday, June 16th from 2 to 5 p.m. at Windsor Recreation Center. The event will be free and open to the public and feature kids from our after-school program at Rankin, Wiley, Archer, and Washington Elementary Schools through our Communities in Schools Greater Greensboro program. For more information, visit kidspoetrybasketball.com. Your voice and opinion matter and will make a difference for the future of our city and quality of life. Help develop an arts master plan to keep the arts healthy and vibrant. Give your feedback on the current state of the arts and culture community in Greensboro. You can do this at the Community Voices event with Mayor Nancy Vaughn on Thursday, June 6th from 5.30 to 7 p.m. in the Van Dyke Performance Space at the Greensboro Cultural Center. There will be food, entertainment, activities, and more. If you can't make it to this event, there will be a series of community engagement events and discussion groups happening throughout Greensboro June 6th through the 9th. This is part of the Cultural Arts Master Plan effort to develop ways to keep the arts and culture thriving in Greensboro. Check out greensboro-nc.gov slash gcamp for a full list of events and to fill out the survey. Keep watching FYI Weekly right here on GTN for all your city news and information. Welcome back. 
The City of Greensboro has 22 departments and several divisions committed to serving you, our residents and visitors. Let's go behind the scenes in our department spotlight. This week we place the spotlight on financial and administrative services. This department is made up of two divisions, the Financial Services Division and the Administrative Services Division. The Financial Services Division includes general accounting, payroll, collections, financial reporting, and treasury management. The Administrative Services Division includes purchasing, equipment services, and centralized contracting. The department's director serves as the chief financial officer and advisor to the city manager and city council. The finance director is responsible for planning and directing the financial affairs of the city in compliance with federal, state, and local financial laws, ordinances, and regulations. On the other side of the break is this week's Way to Go GSO shout out. Stay with us. As we draw to a close, we always want to end on a positive note with our Way to Go GSO shout out. This week's shout out goes to the Forensic Services Division members who attended the 2018 North Carolina International Association for Identification Educational Training Conference in Winston-Salem. Crime Scene Investigator William Lee Allison is the Excellence Award recipient. The NCIAI's annual Excellence Award is presented to an active member who has gone above and beyond the call of duty to serve the justice system in a manner characterized by competence, dedication, and a commitment to excellence. The Excellence Award is presented to only one person in the state and is highly competitive. Two other Greensboro employees received awards. Director of Forensic Services Kelly Tranter was elected to the Office of Second Vice President. Crime Scene Investigator Shelley Garris earned first place honors in the Forensic Photography category and received an honorable mention for her Open Category Photography submission. Forensic Specialist Krista Leonard earned second place in the Forensic Photography category. Congratulations to all for a job well done representing the G-Team. That concludes this edition of FYI Weekly, but you can easily stay connected to the latest city news by linking to us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. For all of us here at the City of Greensboro, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.